Industrial facilities rely on piping to transfer fluids from one place to another. Whether the fluid being transferred is a liquid or a gas, it must flow through piping to get where it's needed. Without piping, a plant couldn't operate. One part of an operator's job is to inspect piping systems and report any abnormal conditions that exist. To know what to look for, the operator must have an understanding of piping and piping auxiliaries. The purpose of piping is to transfer fluids from one location to another. The type of material that's used for the piping depends on the characteristics of the fluid to be transferred and the nature of the process that's involved. For instance, some fluids may be under pressure or under vacuum. Some fluids are extremely hot. And some are extremely cold. Some fluids, such as acids and caustics, can chemically attack certain types of piping materials. This chemical attack can weaken the piping, causing it to leak or even rupture. Because no single piping material can safely handle every type of fluid, you may see many different materials in piping systems. Two commonly used materials are steel and plastic. Steel pipes are often used to transport very hot fluids, such as steam and hot oil. They're also used to move fluids under pressure, such as compressed air and nitrogen. In some applications, steel pipes may be galvanized. Galvanized pipes are coated with zinc to protect them from corrosion. Another common piping material is plastic. Plastic is used in a variety of applications and is better than steel at resisting chemical attack. Plastic is commonly used in systems that transport acids. Now, pipes aren't of much use by themselves. To transport fluids throughout a facility, pipes must be connected to each other and to other system components. The devices that are used to join lengths of pipe together and to join piping to other components are called pipe fittings. Many different types of fittings are used in piping systems, and they can be connected to piping and other components in several ways. For example, some metal fittings are threaded, some are welded, and some are flanged and bolted. Plastic fittings may be threaded, cemented, or fused to piping. Some pipe fittings can be connected to piping and other components in a combination of ways. For example, plastic fittings might be threaded and cemented. Well, now that we've taken a look at pipes and pipe connections, see if you can answer a question. In an industrial plant, you'll generally find dozens of different types of pipe fittings. In this part, we're going to look at examples of some of the most common types. One type of fitting that can be used to join two pieces of pipe is a nipple. A nipple is basically a short piece of pipe with male threads. That is, it's threaded on the outside. The nipple screws into the components that it connects. Nipples are generally used when the piping they connect does not have to be disassembled very often. Another type of fitting is a coupling. In simple terms, a coupling is a short piece of pipe with female threads. That is, it's threaded on the inside. The coupling fits over the outside of the pipes it connects. Like nipples, couplings are generally used on piping that is rarely taken apart. This pipe fitting is called a union. Each end of a union is connected to a piece of pipe and held in place with a threaded collar. When a union is used, two pieces of pipe can be connected or disconnected without having to turn either piece. Because a union can be connected or disconnected without having to turn either pipe, it can be easily dismantled. Unions are often used for applications in which piping and components are frequently taken apart. Here, unions are used to connect an air filter in a system. The filter can be removed simply by disconnecting the unions. Another device that's commonly used to join piping and components is a flange. A flange connection requires two flanges. These two flanges are joined by bolting them together. A gasket between the two flanges helps to prevent leaks. In many cases, the physical layout of a facility and the locations and positions of components require a piping run to change direction. One type of fitting that provides for a change in direction is an elbow. This elbow connects two pieces of pipe at an angle of 90 degrees, while this elbow changes the direction of a pipe run 45 degrees. 
The pipe fittings that we've seen so far are all used to join two pieces of pipe together. But many piping systems have places where more than two pieces of pipe must be joined together. Let's look at some fittings that can be used when more than two pipes are connected. This is a T fitting. It's shaped like the letter T and it has three openings. The branch line is connected at a 90 degree angle to the main line. Another type of fitting that allows for more than two pipes to be connected is a Y fitting. A Y fitting also has three openings, but the side opening is at a 45 degree angle to the body of the fitting. Now, for the most part, all of the fittings we've looked at are used to connect pieces of pipe that have the same diameter, but some types of fittings are used when the pipes to be connected have different diameters. One type is called a reducer. This is the bell reducer. It gets its name from its bell shape. This bell reducer has inside threads on each end, but the threads are for different sized pipe. Another fitting that can connect components of different sizes is a bushing. This bushing has outside threads on one end and inside threads on the other. Here's a bushing that connects a small diameter distribution line to a larger T fitting in a supply line. The final group of fittings we'll look at are those that are used to prevent the flow of fluid or to close off unused components or sections of pipe. Three types of fittings that prevent fluid flow are plugs, caps, and blind flanges. A plug has threads on the outside, so it's screwed into a pipe or other component to block fluid flow. A cap, on the other hand, has threads on the inside, so it fits over the end of a piece of pipe. A blind flange is another fitting that can be used to prevent fluid flow. This blind flange is bolted to a valve. A gasket helps to prevent leaks. In this topic, we took a look at pipes. We saw a sample of pipe fittings, and we discussed how each fitting can be used. Take a minute now to answer some questions about pipes and pipe fittings. Many different types of fittings are used in piping systems and they can be connected to piping and other components in several ways. For example, some metal fittings are threaded, some are welded, and some are flanged and bolted. This pipe fitting is called a union. Each end of a union is connected to a piece of pipe and held in place with a threaded collar. When a union is used, two pieces of pipe can be connected or disconnected without having to turn either piece. A piping system has to allow for weight and movement. Many pipe runs are long and heavy, and the fluid inside them makes them even heavier. Too much weight can overstress the pipe and the components it's connected to, possibly resulting in pipe and equipment damage. Also, piping has a tendency to move or vibrate, even under normal operating conditions. For example, piping may vibrate because it's connected to a piece of operating equipment or because fluid is flowing inside it. Over time, this vibration can weaken the piping. Piping can also move as a result of temperature changes. As hot or cold process fluids pass through piping, the piping may expand or contract. To support the weight of piping, pipe hangers and pipe supports are used. In general, pipe hangers support piping from above, and pipe supports support piping from below. There are many different types of pipe hangers and pipe supports. For example, this type of pipe hanger is called a clamp type hanger. It supports the combined weight of the piping and the fluid inside. Another type of pipe hanger is a spring type hanger. The springs help support the weight of the piping and allow for movement at the same time. This device is called a pipe slide. A pipe slide looks like an inverted T. The single leg is welded to the pipe, while the cross piece serves as a sliding surface. As the pipe moves, it slides across the support beneath it. Many of the processes in a facility require fluids to be heated or cooled. When most materials are heated, they expand, and when they're cooled, they contract. Expansion loops and expansion joints are devices designed to allow piping to expand and contract without being damaged. Let's look at a simplified illustration of a portion of a piping system to get an idea of the effects of expansion. When hot fluid flows through this pipe, the pipe heats up and expands. 
This expansion is resisted by the components the pipe is connected to, and damage could eventually occur. Now we'll add an expansion loop. An expansion loop is basically an extra section of piping that's placed in the process line. Now when the pipe expands, it tends to bend at the loop. This greatly reduces the stress that would occur without the loop. The pipe will also bend at the loop when cool fluid flows through the line and the piping contracts. So an expansion loop will work for temperature changes in either direction. Expansion loops come in many different shapes. Some are actually loops, while others, like the one we saw in our illustration, may be in the shape of a U. Like an expansion loop, an expansion joint can be used to allow piping to expand and contract without being damaged. One common type of expansion joint is the bellows type. It's made of a durable material that can withstand system pressure. The folds that make up the bellows expand and contract as the piping expands and contracts. In this topic, we've discussed what pipe movement is and why it needs to be controlled. We looked at some devices that are commonly used to support piping, and we saw how expansion devices are used to protect systems from the effects of pipe expansion and contraction. Now would be a good time to try some practice questions. For example, piping may vibrate because it's connected to a piece of operating equipment, or because fluid is flowing inside it. Over time, this vibration can weaken the piping. Piping can also move as a result of temperature changes. As hot or cold process fluids pass through piping, the piping may expand or contract. Many of the processes in a facility require fluids to be heated or cooled. When most materials are heated, they expand, and when they're cooled, they contract. Expansion loops and expansion joints are devices designed to allow piping to expand and contract without being damaged. Let's look at a simplified illustration of a portion of a piping system to get an idea of the effects of expansion. When hot fluid flows through this pipe, the pipe heats up and expands. This expansion is resisted by the components the pipe is connected to, and damage could eventually occur. Now we'll add an expansion loop. An expansion loop is basically an extra section of piping that's placed in the process line. Now when the pipe expands, it tends to bend at the loop. This greatly reduces the stress that would occur without the loop. The pipe will also bend at the loop when cool fluid flows through the line and the piping contracts. So an expansion loop will work for temperature changes in either direction. One reason for insulating piping is to limit the effect that the surrounding environment can have on process fluid temperatures. Hotter objects always give up heat to cooler objects. Therefore, a hot exposed pipe will give up heat to the cooler air around it. As a result of this heat transfer, the fluid inside the pipe is also cooled. On the other hand, a cold exposed pipe will pick up heat from the warmer air around it. This causes the fluid inside the pipe to warm up. If a process fluid needs to remain at a specific temperature, Insulation can be used to help maintain that temperature. Another reason for using insulation is to protect personnel. Many fluids in a facility are very hot or very cold, and the temperature of the piping that carries these fluids can be very close to the temperature of the fluid. Contact with very hot or very cold piping can result in serious burns or other injuries. Insulation acts as a barrier between the piping and personnel working nearby. Many different materials can be used to insulate piping. Among those commonly used are calcium silicate, rubber, and polyurethane. Insulating materials all have one thing in common. They're poor conductors of heat. Since insulating materials are soft, they can be damaged if they're bumped into. They can also be damaged if they're exposed to rain or other liquids or vapors. To help protect insulation from damage, a metal or cloth cover called lagging is often put over it. Lagging is commonly made of aluminum, stainless steel, canvas, fiberglass, or plastic. Although lagging is used to protect insulation, it can also be damaged if it's struck or bumped. Operators are usually required to inspect piping for leaks, as well as for damaged or missing insulation. Damaged or missing insulation is generally easy to identify, 
but locating a leak in a pipe that's covered by insulation can sometimes be difficult. Some of the things you can look for when you're checking insulated pipe for leaks include discolored insulation and sagging or bulging insulation. Sometimes, when an insulated pipe leaks, the insulation will come apart or the leaking fluid will run down to the nearest opening. When this happens, you may see puddles of fluid under the pipe. If you spot any problems, report them so that the proper action can be taken. Heat tracing is a method used to prevent liquids in a piping system from thickening or freezing. For example, some pipes carry heavy oil. In cold weather, the oil can thicken and won't flow easily. Heat tracing warms the oil, keeps it from thickening, and allows it to flow through the piping more easily. Heat tracing is also used to prevent liquids, such as water, from freezing. If water freezes in a pipe, it could cause the pipe to burst. One type of heat tracing uses heat from steam. This system consists of a temperature sensor connected to the surface of the pipe, a temperature controller, a control valve, steam trace tubing, and devices called steam traps, which allow steam that is condensed to flow out of the system. During operation, steam passes through the steam trace tubing and heats the pipe and the liquid inside. The steam trace tubing may run beside the process piping, or it may be wrapped around the process piping. In either case, both the piping and the tubing are usually covered with insulation. The steam passing through the tubing keeps the process fluid within the required temperature range. The temperature sensor is in contact with the surface of the piping. When a change occurs in the surface temperature, the sensor will detect the change and signal the controller. The controller then signals the control valve, which opens or closes as necessary, to increase or decrease the flow of steam to bring the temperature back within the desired range. Now, not all heat tracing systems use steam. Some use electricity. Electrical heat tracing systems perform the same function as steam heat tracing systems, but they use heat tracing tape instead of steam trace tubing. This is an example of electrical heat tracing tape. It contains a wire or conductor covered by electrical insulation. When electrical heat tracing is used, the heat tracing tape is connected to a source of electricity. The flow of electrical current through the conductor produces the heat that warms the process fluid. The heat tracing tape is usually wrapped around the process piping. The tape and the piping are typically covered with insulation. Electrical heat tracing systems generally rely on thermostats to monitor and control sections of the systems. In this system, temperature sensors touch the process piping and are connected to thermostats. If the temperature of the fluid in a section falls below a predetermined value, that section of the heat tracing is energized. In other electrical heat tracing systems, a single panel is used to monitor several tracing circuits. The lights on this panel indicate which circuits are energized and which are de-energized. In this topic, we saw how insulation and heat tracing work to keep a process fluid in a piping system at the desired temperature. We saw two types of heat tracing systems, steam heat tracing and electrical heat tracing. Now try some practice questions to check what you've learned. Since insulating materials are soft, they can be damaged if they're bumped into. They can also be damaged if they're exposed to rain or other liquids or vapors. To help protect insulation from damage, a metal or cloth cover called lagging is often put over it. Lagging is commonly made of aluminum, stainless steel, canvas, fiberglass, or plastic. This is an example of electrical heat tracing tape. It contains a wire or conductor covered by electrical insulation. When electrical heat tracing is used, the heat tracing tape is connected to a source of electricity. The flow of electrical current through the conductor produces the heat that warms the process fluid. The heat tracing tape is usually wrapped around the process piping. The tape and the piping are typically covered with insulation.